everyone, and welcome to another episode of Pony411. This is episode 103 for the week of May 17th. I am your co-host, Alcatraz, and with me, like normal, is Nemesis. I have an Ariel Soundwaves figure. A little bit smaller than I expected, but looks pretty cool. It is. Ariel Soundwaves is Ponyville FM's mascot. It's their OC. Yes. It's Let's cool. It. it looks good. So. Nice. Pretty nice. You can get one if you go to Midwest Pony Fest, by the way, but they're already done registration, so... Oh, well. Yeah. Anyway, we've got another episode. have a new new pony episode to talk about. <gasps> yes, because we had a week off. Yes. We've also got a comic to talk about. Oh, no. And a little bit of fan content. So, let's start out with the news. If you'd like to follow along, you can find all of our show notes at pony411.libsyn.com slash show notes. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N. So go there, click the link for this episode, and follow along. Let's start with convention news. Midwest Brony Fest has published their schedule of events. Speaking of which. Speaking of which, <laughs> yes. So go there, check it out, plan your con experience. Do stuff. Yeah. Or don't. Or don't. Bake show con, quit or go to a con, and then not do anything. That seems like a great idea. Well, maybe you just <laughs> want to go there and hang out with friends. I guess. Yeah, some people do that, which is fine. But yeah, go see what they have and plan your weekend. Isn't there a Ponyville FM panel or something? Yes, on Saturday. Probably should check that out. Just saying. Just saying, you know. <laughs> Remember your sponsors. <laughs> Continuing on. Buck, the UK convention, is back. It's April 9th and 10th next year in Manchester, England. Yes. So, those of you over on that side, looking forward to that. Yeah. Like our artist. Yes. TrotCon has announced Stefan Andrews will be attending. So neat. They've also announced a list of community musicians and vendors that will be performing and vending. So there's quite <laughs> a few of them, so go check their site out for the list. Yes, it's a pretty big one. It is. Pacific PonyCon has announced that Noacking and Eileen Monty will be attending. Community guests, they're only their second and third guests actually, total so far. Oh, it's a brand new con. Yeah. So, we'll get around to it. We'll get there. Vendor applications for Equestria LA are now live. The other California con. One of the others, yes. yes. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to sell Southern stuff California. there, get to app putting in your applications. And sell stuff. Yeah. Make some money, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Everfree Northwest has a few announcements. Oh, yes. Among them, they have announced a few more community guests, including, but not limited to... Penstroke, author of Past Sins, Somber, author of Fallout Equestria Project Horizons, Post-It Pony, Woo! who everyone knows, and Full Papers, who we blame for everything. Yes, it's his fault. Yep. When he's, he misspeaks, it's his also Full, full Papers' fault. Yes. Either him or Fusion. But Post-It Pony. Yes. Post-It Pony, he posted a Post-It note on my car last year. Yep. He posts Post-Its on everything. Yeah, yes. but it was just like, oh, hey, my car. Yay. Everfree Northwest has also announced the musician lineup for Pony Stock 2015. So, check that out. Lots of musicians. Lots of them. They've also announced that M.A. Larson will be in attendance. Thanks. <laughs> Stealing their joke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They've also announced a special set of ticketed events mm -hmm. that will be taking place at the convention. These are not included in your badge price, so you have to pay for them extra. And they are not exactly cheap either. They are honest. not cheap, but they are very special. They are... Things like breakfast. Breakfast with Celestia. Mm -hmm. So you actually have breakfast, a full-service catered breakfast. They should do it at dawn. With Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a, a catered breakfast with Nicole Oliver herself. The ticket price for that one is two hundred dollars. Yeah, but that you know includes the food. So there's a similar one: dinner with Discord. That's two hundred fifty. So mm -hmm. have dinner with John Delancey himself. There's a voice acting class with Lee Talkar for one hundred and fifty dollars. There's a mock pitch meeting with Big Jim and Jason Teeson, the directors, for one hundred and fifty. That sounds interesting. And the cheapest one: the Shirt Clop Pones Variety Show with John Delancey. It's 40 bucks. Yep. Interesting. Very interesting events, special ones. Indeed. So if you've got the extra cash and you want to go to those, yep. check them out. And last 
And they're selling out. Yeah. Uh, sell- they are selling. Yeah, they are selling. And last but not least, Every Northwest has also put their event schedule live. So you can, again, plan. plan. Like we should. Yes, like we should be. I've already got some ideas. Moving on to fandom news. A trailer and release info has been released for Ponies Anthology 5. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're going to be premiere at BronyCon. Yep. BronyCon 2015 this yep, year. Yep, that's their premiere. So, yeah. It's coming, guys. Who it's knows happening. how long this will be? <laughs> Two minutes. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> Again. Not another one of those. But no. It'll probably be good. We'll help. Main 6, you know, the whole fighting is magic group. Yeah. They've been teasing some of the character models for the game that they're making. The cow. The cow. Yeah. Just the cow. Swap. Just showing the cow and the palette swaps. Some of the palette swaps. Some of them. So, yeah. Looks interesting. Indeed. It does. Hey, look. They're not dead. They aren't. They, they, they're still there. They're still working. A ponified version of the cookie clicker game has <laughs> come out, much to everyone's... <laughs> Waste of time. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you at now? 22 quintillion per second. Wow. Yeah. That only started last night. <laughs> so there's a woman out there who probably broke it already. Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to break it. Broke, as in break the counter. Yeah. A new mod for Fallout New Vegas called Gardens of Equestria is in the works. It's an interesting looking mod. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a crossover. You're still human, but yeah, it's basically, it seems to be the story somehow these two universes kind of mush together because of science. Yeah. Fallout science, so you know it's already hinky. <laughs> yeah. Looks interesting. Indeed. See how it pans out. A Trotmania 3 is out. So yeah, yes. if you're interested in those, next one's out. Go grab it. In merchandise news, images of the school spirit, rarity, sunny flare, and lemon zest Equestria Girls dolls have appeared. Yes, and so has Fluttershy, Archery Fluttershy. Yeah. And Pinkie Pie School Spirit as well. Oh, yeah. So, yes, those are... Yes, those are there if you're interested in the Equestria Girls dolls at if, all. Yeah. I'm not. Nope. But some people are. So, if you're into collecting or whatever... Toy Wiz is listing the Aurora Celestia plush for pre-order. Yes. Yeah. And it actually looks pretty good. The first, to... the, well, actually, the second official Celestia plush, I believe, to hit market. Yeah. The... Did Aurora release one before? This is the Aurora. I mean, before this, no? I don't, the I smaller don't recall. One? I don't think so. I know they released Luna recently. I think it was the same size as this one. Yeah, I think so. And F- Funrise released... Mosa. Released a Celestia. That's what this is the third, but Fun Rise I did too, remember? The Sparkling yeah. Princess line. Yeah, and there's also the um, so Build a Bear. Oh, yeah, this is fourth. Yeah. <laughs> there's been and a few. And we know 40Es is coming Soon. sometime. End of spring. Well, they said Wave 1, and that might not be way a part of Wave yeah, 1. Yeah, that might be a different one, so. We'll see. It should be coming out soon. So, yeah, this one looks pretty good. It's like 25 bucks. So. The Amazon listing for the book. Discord and the Ponyville Players Drama Rama has been updated with a cover. Yes. So, yeah. Sea Jacks, a type of clip on charm thing for your headphones, yes. has announced little pony figures too. Yes, they have pony ones. Yeah, and these they either clip onto your headphone cord or they can actually plug into the headphone jack. Mm hmm. Put little ponies on your headphones. They're not exactly widely available yet, apparently. It, yeah, that's what it looks I like. Look, they so. said they had a little link for buying locations. They don't have a lot of locations right now. They're pretty. Southwest U.S. centric right now, yeah, kind of sucks for us uh, for us up in the Northwest. But yes, in comic news, the MLP comic Omnibus Volume Two is up for pre-order. These are the things that help if you want to catch up. Don't remember how many of these. Oh, thirteen through twenty-four of the main series. That's what it is. So, so yeah, twelve issues. Easy way to catch up to the if you're like want to catch up to the what we have right now. Yeah. If you haven't already been collecting them and you want to, or you didn't catch jump up, on yeah. the humble bundle way back a couple months ago, that too, yeah. So yeah, they're neat. They're there. IDW has released an extended preview for comic issue number thirty. So if you like spoiling yourself, <laughs> sort of, there you go. Yes. Last bit of comic news: a bunch of comic covers for issue thirty have been revealed. Yes. A whole bunch of them. Like and seven. Yeah, it's a bunch. 
Leakfish actually did one too, mm-hmm. which is really cool. And it's a uh, Phoenix Comics slash Everfree Northwest exclusive. Yeah, so we'll have to pick that one up from over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tony Flix has also showed off the covers for issues 30 and 31 because there was a little retweet thing. It's hot that topic did. ones. Yeah. They're neat. Last bit of information, and it may potentially be spoilery. For season five. For season five, yeah. So. If you're really particular, you might want to tune out for a couple minutes. Based on some of the information in the new uh, MLP card game cards, we might be seeing some of the following characters again later in this season. She, Sandwich, Sapphire Shores, Steven Magnet, Fleetfoot, Flitter, and Lightning Dust. This is based off of some of the text in the cards, which Mm -hmm. could just be flavor text, meaning nothing could also be meaning that we're going to see those things in the episode. Indeed. There was the cheese sandwich. Yeah. Cryptic tweets. Some cryptic tweets saying, uh, which, which one said that? Was it one of the writers? One of the writers, uh, Confalone. Yeah. Nick Confalone said something about secrets hidden in plain sight for the cheese sandwich one. So it's like, huh, interesting. <laughs> so we might be seeing some of those later on. We'll find out. We shall. So yes, that's the news. So yeah, we had another pony episode. This was make new friends but keep Discord. Kind of a weak title. Kind of a weak title. It wasn't a huge fan of the title. Basically, a quick recap of the episode: Discord and Fluttershy are having their weekly tea, and topic of well, Fluttershy makes a new friend called tree hugger and talking about new friend and discord is getting a little bit jealous because she's taking her to the gala it's getting there yes so uh, yeah it brings up the topic of the gala and discord wanted to go with fluttershy but fluttershy is taking tree hugger instead discord is very not pleased with <laughs> this but he gets his own ticket and decides to bring his own friend mm-hmm. to the gala and it's uh none other than the smooth. He's yeah. Green. It's a big green blob. Not purple. Not purple, which is interesting. A little bit different than the G1, but that's fine. Significantly different. His, you know, world covering. Yeah. But yeah, and then the gala goes on with Discord continually trying to get at Fluttershy. <laughs> and causing chaos by doing so. Yeah, it ends up kind of shoving the smooths off repeatedly t- and well it turns out this smooth really likes shiny things mm-hmm. and eats them and grows bigger and discord shoves them into a like a treasure closet how do you have a treasure closet and he eats them all gets really big bursts through the door covers everything and everyone gets mad at discord fluttershy and discord kind of have a bite of an argument discord threatens to toss tree hugger into an alternate dimension <laughs> that escalated rather quickly um but Fluttershy talks him out of it. They realize what's going on, and he basically says sorry yeah. and deals, fixes everything. And that's basically it. Yeah, more or less. More or less. I thought I thought it was all right. It was okay, but I wasn't really doing many cartwheels. Oh, I mean, I, I can't say anything was really bad, oh, majorly bad about it. But it's just, I don't know. It just didn't click with me. Just maybe a few little things here and there added up. It was just kind of all right. Yeah. It was watchable, it was good, but... Okay. I th- I think there's been better Discord episodes, personally. I really enjoyed this one, actually. Really? Yeah, I thought it was great. Huh. It's actually... I, actually uh, I think it was better than the, actually the last few episodes. I'm trying to remember what that was the most wanted and the... There was, what was the one before that? Was... No, it wasn't that one. That was the Rainbow Dash one. Never mind. But it was still better than the last one. I actually thought it was a really good episode overall. I really actually enjoyed this one quite a bit. And I think it's actually a pretty strong Discord episode. Huh. I don't know. I just... It didn't grab me. I don't know why. It just didn't. Because you're lame. There were, there were a few pretty funny bits. Oh, yes. And lots of references, too. Oh, a ton of references. And a it's shiny a Discord reference. episode. Well, yeah. One thing that was interesting. Discord's... Home dimension, I guess you yeah. want to call it. Like actually, first it's time a chaotic really void. It. Yeah, it is, which makes sense. I think people speculated that was the case at one point. I remember seeing someone that was the idea. They didn't know where you. No one knew where he was, where you lived, or anything. Yeah. So 
So <laughs> he's got to live somewhere. Where does he live? Just this void space. Yep. It's actually really cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the, and the male putty got lost. Oh, I don't blame him. And then carried off by that creature. Yep. That was a thing. RP Mail Pony 2015 to 2015. <laughs> yeah. One reference that I think caught almost everyone off guard was the Metal Gear Solid reference, like yeah. right there, blatant. This is not like not even, even off the side. Use the sound. Yeah, use the, the sound, the exclamation sound. point, the box, everything. The box that said the game, which we all just lost. <laughs> you had to bring that up. I had to. But. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a surprising just Metal Gear Solid reference in the middle of My Little Pony. Yeah. And so, of course, Didn't some people argue we've already done a Metal Gear Solid reference, but I would argue we have not. Yeah, the future Twilight? Yes. Yeah. I argue that's an Escape from New York reference. It's also kind of funny because this reference is actually now inadvertently topical just because of the big oh, Konami brouhaha yeah. right now. So it's just... hope that doesn't spill over into this because of that reference. <laughs> oh, Konami. Oh, uh, Konami. It's kind of funny, though, that, d- that Pinky... Shook the camera. <laughs> well, that, that's another one, but the box didn't fool Pinky at all. No. And he scored. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. But yes, um, Pinky didn't shake didn't put the camera. And that was weird. That was, a, that was a little bit weird. I mean, she doesn't... I know a whole bunch of people, and I know you've complained about this a lot, how people keep saying that Pinky's constantly breaking the fourth wall, but she isn't. No, she's not. This time she definitely did. Yeah, this is one of like three, four times she did. Blatantly. Over the... Over... Let's see. There was like the the Warner Brothers type thing. There was the, the first, first episode season where she, you know, popped the screen yeah. blacked out and she popped through it again. There was that. That the second time with the trombone thing. Yeah. There was. I don't think she really broke the fourth wall again until a season. What was it? Three, I believe. Magic duel. That was also when Twilight broke the fourth wall. When they she had the mouth. Yeah, the little. Probably gave her back her mouth and she was about to speak and. Yeah. The Iron Will broke really the fourth wall once. Often. Discord's broken the fourth wall. Yeah, the first time we saw Discord, there was that one pony that walked across the screen. That wasn't Pinky, but yeah. yeah. So it doesn't actually happen all that often. So it's a little bit interesting when we see So it. when people latch onto that and use it uh, repeatedly in their fanfics in an entire jo- uh, replacement for their uh, actual jokes, it's kind of annoying. So it makes it less funny when the show itself does it. Because, oh, hey, another Pinky broke the fourth wall joke, except then you have to remember, oh, wait, they don't actually do that that often in the show. It's the people in the fanfics who are doing it who are running it into the ground. Please stop that. <laughs> Please stop that. It's funny when it's used... Sparingly. Sparingly and well. Like that. Which, it's like, just the what weird camera shake. Here. And then packing a bunch of cakes in boxes, and then, because Discord wanted all the cakes. All the cakes. Were there 40 of them? <laughs> This but, is just in Discord is Lex Luthor. <laughs> the question is, did you did you put Mr. and Mrs. Cake and the two babies in? The I was box hoping I was hoping like to that. see that. Just see her waiting. grabbing the one of them and just putting them in a box. I was waiting to see that and I didn't. I was a little disappointed. But then of course he cancels his order. Yeah. He didn't really want them anyway. Yeah. He was just trying to find you know And you did briefly say it earlier the shining reference, which a lot of people yeah, apparently the did door. not get. There's I, the, I couldn't Put my I, finger I, on my side. I, I, I recognized it. it. I was like, one. I knew it's a reference to something I saw. I was sitting there, not bracketing my brains. Like, I know this is a reference to something. Little kid, little weird sweater, staring at the door, and yeah, it's a reference to Shining. Yeah, Ed Rom. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was um, the alternate dimension, the live action sock puppet. Yeah, puppets again. Yep, <laughs> that was interesting. Senor Huevo. And that is not a fan name. That was named by... Um, Stefan yeah. Andrews. Uh, Hello. Golden Rust. It's not necessarily canon. It's just, that's what you just called it. Cause, yeah. I mean, but it's not, you know, fandom people making the names. That is weird. Like, yeah, it's weird. Oh, yeah, he's an interdimensional portal. Or we'll just open, <laughs> we'll just open a door portal. Okay. <laughs> This has implications about Equestria Girls, possibly. It's like, it's like, I've seen several fanfics. He just runs, walks over to the Equestria Girls universe. Because he can. Why not? he can. So this would imply that, yes, he can, in fact, do that. He doesn't have to go through a mirror portal. He could just open one himself, which, yeah. He's pandimensional. He's a pandimensional creature. <sighs> Multi-universe singularity. Yeah. Oh, boy. Don't make my head hurt. <laughs> so, yeah, all in all, it... it like I said, I, there's nothing wrong. I just 
Oh, tree hugger. I, well, we have to talk yeah, about tree we hugger. We have to talk about tree hugger. Tree hugger, very stereotypical, just hippie. You know, the very far stereotypical. out, man. That kind of stuff. The highs half lit all the time. Very Always, impl- um, implications that of of drug use, all that stuff. The dreadlocks. Yeah, dreadlocks. And... Her name's tree hugger. Her name is tree hugger. <laughs> and voiced by Nicole Oliver. Yeah. Which I did not. I didn't realize she until the a, credits. Yeah, she did a good job yeah. at, at changing her voice for that one. Because with Charlie and um, Celeste, you can kind of hear the similarities between the two voices. Yeah, you can. Just like with Andrea Lemon, you can hear the similarities between Fluttershy and Pinky, especially when uh, Fluttershy is trying to be loud or Pinky's trying to be quiet. You can start hearing the similarities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was it's just, it's just, she's talking about her you know, vibes and then chakras and, and talk, uh, getting a good vibe from Discord and him getting offended initially. <laughs> <laughs> that means it's a good thing. Yeah. Yes. A compliment. Uh, and it was also, but she was also the one who stopped the smooths from spreading everywhere because she sang a song. Uh, yeah, that was that had a lot of whinnying in it. It was weird. Yeah. I wasn't actually a huge fan of that. I thought it was scene. kind of funny. It was, <laughs> but it, it was one of those. It was funny, then it kind of got annoying. It got annoying. I think it's one of the reasons why I wasn't a huge fan. Ah. It's just because the the antics funny at first, but started to get a mm-hmm. little bit grating. Mm-hmm. After a while, also I just also like that whole scene with Discord in his house, just ranting to himself. That whole scene was just good. I think just him ranting and ranting about, oh, I don't even want to go. <laughs> yes, you do. Wow, he's acting like a jilted lover. <laughs> shipping. He's also sort of acting. Well, yeah, shipping but, ahoy. Like I was saying when we we're watching it, it's like, oh, hello, Spike. The whole, oh, I don't want to go anyway. I don't want to go. Any ticket shows up. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Spike. Oh, speaking of Spike, the, 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 his he was just Spike was in his room, and he Discord just shows oh, up in his bed. That was creepy. <laughs> Under Twilight. the covers, too. Yeah. Just, and of course, Spike talk. just reacts like, "Nope, <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to deal with this today." <laughs> nope. <laughs> the gala itself, another one was that there was the announcer who was actually Tabitha, which I I should have caught the fr- when I first heard it, but it's like I wasn't expecting Tabitha to voice an adult male pony. So yeah, it was but a bit she was voicing an adult male pony. Was it wasn't the, the male pony? Um, that was and Ash- Ashley Ball. Ashley, yeah. yeah. It's like, huh? So I was like, uh, I'm wondering if they uh, decided to not just uh, just we already have these voice actors. Just could you do these voices? Oh, from what I remember, is that's something that they do a lot. Yeah, they have they have a background They've character that, that a lot needs now. a line. They just go, "Hey, we got this. Who thinks they can do it? Yeah. Who's who's well, already I'm there?" I was surprised they didn't use their like like Peter New or something or Lee Tuck or maybe they weren't available. Maybe yeah, maybe they weren't there at the time. Because, I mean, they weren't doing any other voices. So it may yeah. have been, hey, we need this. You're here. Can you do it? Can you do it? Yeah. Well, speaking, I guess, of voices and stuff, Andrea Lidman really delivered some weird, had some weird deliveries in the later part of the episode. I don't know what the heck yeah, happened. Yeah, like during the argument between Yeah, the she two. had this weird shouting, I don't know, this yelling it, Like an out-of-place like, yell. It didn't, yeah, it, it just was a weird delivery. I don't know what the heck happened there. Yeah. I, I suspect they had they storyboarded the scene very differently and they did the voice and then they changed it and didn't really bother to re uh record. So it just sounds weird because none of them really usually do real bad uh deliveries. Yeah, it wasn't bad, it just seemed or anything so misplaced. It's just, it's just was I would actually say it's bad in the context just because it's kind of just so weird sounding. It just doesn't sound right. It doesn't fit the tone of the the scene or anything. It just it feels like it was recorded for something else and then something changed. Yeah. Well, that's why I say it's not bad per se. It's that the recording itself was fine. It was just like misused. That like I said, the scene is wrong for it. If the well, scene was changed, that, bad, that, that clip would be, it. So could it's, be I don't think Andrea Lemon was at fault. I think it's more just yeah, that, something changed it's, afterwards. It's not bad. It's not Andrea Lemon didn't do a bad job. It's just. Or maybe she did. Everything around know. it. And maybe she did just do a bad job. Maybe she misunderstood the scene. I don't know. I don't know. And no one bothered to correct it, which would be weird. Which is, yeah, it's kind of weird for that part. Uh, another thing was, was Celestia, was, um, how people saw it, is like, yeah, we've seen this kind of before. She's like, she apparently hates the gala or something. And yeah, now we're seeing the second time where she's like happy that someone came around and caused a little craziness it's to liven it up. Almost interesting, though. It's like, yeah. They forgot about the last gal. I don't that think they seen. did. It's just it's, they they acted like it was new. Like Celestia already. Well, this one didn't end with everyone she, running away. <laughs> but Celestia already had talked about how it's so boring, and she yeah. likes seeing it li- li- livened up. And it's almost like they forgot that. Eh, maybe just re- you know reiterating, make sure a 
I like it when this crazy stuff happens. It's always it also, you know, also this time she didn't have to four plan everything. seasons since then. Yeah, she had also didn't have to plan. I also think that was part of it was yeah, you know, Twilight was helping plan this to help uh, offload some of the work. Yeah. And <laughs> and Twilight's like, don't blow this for me to Discord. That was that was funny. Yeah, just yeah. that was fun seeing her get <laughs> this is just get, get mad. Just just telling Discord, you better not screw this up. So all in all, it wasn't bad. It just didn't. It's. I think it's just the little things here and there. Because nothing scarier than an angry librarian. <sighs> I've fortunately never been on the receiving end of that. I've watched it happen though. Yeah. I haven't been on the receiving, but it's like. <laughs> no. Yeah. All, all in all, I think because of all those little things there, mm. it was just enough, just enough that it didn't quite catch me i think so except for, i think the only real misstep was that weird awkward delivery of the line other than that i think it actually well, worked out very yeah, well I, I think it's that with you know some of the antics were getting a bit great almost forgot the cmc were there yes the cmc were there in dresses, in they're, dresses. They're, they're, they're their sisters like adoptive sort of sisters plus one yeah they they said they were their dates it's like oh so the plus one is supposed to be a date you guys, what have you done? You know what you just <sighs> yeah. did with those lines, right? You know oh what you just did. We're going to go crazy, and we have gone crazy. People are already shipping Tree Flower and Fluttershy together. Or Tree Hugger. Wow. Wow. Tree I flower. just pulled a Discord because he kept getting the name wrong. Although he was <laughs> I think he was doing it on He purpose. was intentionally. Tree. Some... Embrace. I like that. I think I'm going to change my name. But <laughs> That was funny. Yes. But, yeah, see in the CMC just, <laughs> we're going to kill. <laughs> and, hey, Scooter the War dress. Scootaloo was happy in her dress. <laughs> Apparently people thought that would be bad, or she would never do that. <laughs> We've seen it before. So yeah, it was all right. I and I thought it. it was great. And you thought it was great. I thought it was all right. but I'd say it's one of the better episodes of the season. Not the best. I still think that Premiere and Tanks for the Memories are better, probably. But third best, I guess. Yeah. Out of this one might be better than, than the last seven. one. But, <laughs> third uh, out of seven. <laughs> <laughs> eh. It's a toss-up for me. I, I don't. It, like I said, it just didn't catch me. So probably missed some stuff, but whatever. Yeah, it's a Discord episode. It's, it's pretty dense with the references and stuff, probably. Yeah, and so, yeah. sight gags. That's all I've got. I don't know if you've got anything more you want to talk about with it. Yeah, not really. I guess we got that all sorted out. So after that, we've got a comic to talk about, though. Mm-hmm. So how would you take that away? Yeah. This is Friends Forever number 16. After a month of just the special issues, we're finally back to a regular release schedule for the other main two series. Yeah. So this one is Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. And it's written by Jeremy Whitley and art by Jen Blake. Anyway, there's a scavenger hunt going on in Ponyville. And it's pretty much from Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon's point of view. Mostly Diamond Tiara. And there's a scavenger hunt, and they want to enter, but you have to have three ponies. The owner's only two of them, so her dad helps to hire by hiring. Uh, what's her name? Nancy. Prancy Drew. Prancy Drew, I think. Drew, yeah. I think. Something like that. Yes, Prancy Drew. If there's a reference, you know, Nancy Drew. Duh. So they, that's the whole thing. Is they're going to try to beat the CMC, even though they didn't really want to initially, but now that they're CMC entering, nope, they got to take them down a notch. <laughs> Apparently, so. The whole thing is they hired someone and they're going on doing the scavenger and trying to beat this MC. And that's how far it go, I guess. Yeah. This is actually interesting because it's weird because you're focusing on two antagonists that the fandom is pretty heavily against. Even more so yeah. than the villains themselves. Because they're just straight up bullies. And we get to see kind of, I guess, appear into their lives a little and their our thought processes. So because of that, I actually found it really interesting. It, it was definitely a different take on things. Mm-hmm. And we kind of see that they're not exactly happy, even though they claim, or at least Diamond Tiara is not exactly happy, even though she tries to claim she is. Yeah. At least according to this comic, we don't know that we are getting, we got implications about a season five episode with her and stuff. So who knows? But it's just kind of interesting just because of that, because we get this weird thing where she says one thing, but the, what we see is different like she tells her dad she's apparently her dad thinks that cmc are bullies yeah she's been lying to her Mm -hmm. and he just believes her because it's probably his precious little girl can do no wrong yeah my little princess is what what he calls her yeah so she can't do any wrong Mm -hmm. yeah abusing that (laughs) yeah so 
I found it rather interesting. It's just kind of an interesting take on these antagonists because I was wondering how they're going to do this. You know, it's like what they're doing. A, it's like this can't this can't possibly go well, can it? Because you can't really end very. You can't end on a real positive note per se, but you can't really go on a negative note well that well either. So they kind of did it though. Yeah, I, I think I think they pulled it off as well as they could have. Yeah, for what it is. It it was it's definitely readable, but it's not what you'd expect. Like the other ones were. Yeah, it's it, it plays out completely different, differently. Very different, and I actually enjoyed that a lot. It's just hey, let's try this, and it worked. I think it paid off real well. What yeah. they tried, I'll, and also paint the artist also inserted in her little OC thing or something as a for a quick joke. And there was a reference to Littlest Pet Shop in the very beginning. Yeah, which I just found kind of funny. It's like, oh hey, look, there's this other franchise we work on a lot. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's just overall very nice surprise. I was, I was surprised by this one. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So I'd say definitely spend the four bucks on it. Yeah. Go get it. Go read it. This is a good one. Very good one, actually. So. Yeah. Yeah, art's good. Writing's nice. Pacing's well. Mm-hmm. It works. It works really well. It's very well done. Mm-hmm. So check it out. Go get it. That's get that. It. So yeah, that's. Last of our discussions, so on to fan content. I've got a couple of songs for you. The first one is See You in the Spring by Naysayer. smooth jazzy kind of a song no lyrics so you know who's a pony or not it, it is it's inspired by tanks for the memories obviously see you in the spring and yeah it's just a nice mellow smooth jazzy song some of my favorite parts is just the the guitar work and that mm. bass line it's just it's great just sit back and listen to it and kind of makes you want to sway though I will say because of its smoothie, the, how smooth it is, it is a little bit hard to remember when you're not listening to it. Mm. So, I found it kind of generic sounding, actually. Yeah. Mm. What it reminded me of was actually, it made me think of hold music when I'm on call with tech support or something. That's what it made me think of, and that made me kind of irrationally angry. Because I just remember being on hold for 40 minutes once with my ISP. So I've it made been me on angry. the other side of that, putting someone on hold for 40 minutes. It's not fun. I'll just so yeah, it just that's what it reminded me of was just hold music, so generic smooth jazz, which yeah. is what a lot of hold music is the anymore. Hold music and is, elevator music. Yeah, it's kind of nowadays that, generic that, smooth, it's, smooth jazz. It's intended to be you know, calm and smoothing. So it's not it's something smoothing. I would um listen to uh very often. If you are, <laughs> I would recommend it. If it came, although I think if it came on I wouldn't even notice. It's like I whatever, I wouldn't hate it. I'd just kind of not notice, it's just kind of there. The next song I have is a cover of Chant of Immortality. This one's done by Woodlore. Remembrance, a part of every life. Numerous regrets, the art of passing time. Not one forgets, spent nights of chasing days. This one, Woodlore again. Woodlore again. We've featured him a couple times, and we've featured, I think... Forever Rebrony a couple times. Forever Rebrony a couple times. This one, the original one we included in the big The big music content. episode. Yeah, I thought this one was very well done. It's a nice acoustic cover, mm-hmm. so it doesn't have all the chanting and mm-hmm. other instruments. There's a lot of emotion mm-hmm. you can hear in his, in his vocals. But yeah, I, th- I thought it, I thought it was pretty. Good. I yeah. might prefer the original one to this one, but I thought this was good enough to to mention. Yeah, it's Woodlore, sort of like usual, his guitar work and his vocal search. 
pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. I will say the yeah the original chant of mortality is better, in my opinion. It just this, but this it kind of sounded like to me was a uh, like a B side alternate version or like or a bonus track on like an album. Like you know you have that main version, yeah. then it's a bonus track. It's a, a different version of this, like an acoustic version of the same song. That's that's actually a good thing in my opinion. It's 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 different enough. It's not just it's cause that's what it sounded like to me. It was just like oh it's the hidden acoustic version of a song. You're also dating yourself by using the term B side. I heard the vinyls. What am I? And besides, vinyls knows, or cassette tapes. Yeah. Besides, vinyls are in vogue now, so everyone knows what B side. I hope everyone knows who buy because they're back in style. <laughs> At least by the vinyls. I mean, I went to a store. There's a big old vinyl <laughs> display. But yes, I, I will agree with you. It it's very good. It's different. The only thing the only thing I would really change is I would have dropped the ending chorus just because of how he plays out the last mm. verse is so emotion filled and he already tapers it down that if he didn't go into the mm. chorus again after that I think it would have been a perfect way to just let the song sit with that emotion in it but otherwise it's, it's still good it's still really good I still yeah. think you should check it out so that's the music I have do you got any fanfics for us? Yeah. Uh, I don't have any new ones, but I have a couple of updates. I uh, I found something I thought about, but decided against it. But withdrawal, you remember that's the Twilight gets addicted to magic after T Rex thing. Got update. It's kind of a filler chapter, more or less. It's also a little bit lighter than the previously yeah. kind of dark, pretty dark chapters. So yeah. yeah, it's it's a filler chapter. So it's like finishing that. Little that area. It's like tying up the mm-hmm. loose ends in that and getting ready to move mm-hmm. on to more. Firebird Dahlia by the the albino corn, updated. That's the sunset is a sibling of Spitfire, fic from a, I think a month or two ago or something like that. Something like that. It yeah. This is basically Sheen Spitfire actually argue face to face. Argue. 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 Yes. <laughs> in much the same way that the World War Two was a scuffle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then we can This also sets up for the actual what the heck is Firebird Dahlia? Because at the very end we get. Let me it's tell. A, it's a type of flower, but we yeah. don't know. And we don't know what, what the significance what is or anything. And, yeah. And we sets up for that because Sunset starts telling Twilight and I think a couple other people, ponies. I think yeah. Um, yeah. What what's going on? And Dash was there. I think. N- no. no? Was it? It's it it splits off into this. two. Sunset's going to explain it yeah, to I think Twilight, and Sun- Spitfire's, Spitfire's going to explain it to Sun that's what and it was. Dash. That's what it was. That's what I knew. Dash was there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then finally, the other albino corn fanfic that we featured, Long Road to Friendship, also updated. And this one is more or less, once again, Sunset being in super denial about her feelings, and also having to deal with spending the day with Trixie, a nightmare she would not wish on anyone. But it turns out fairly well in the end. It turns out fine in the end, but yeah, it's just basically about her having to deal with her job and having to be at the job with Trixie all day. All day. Not being happy about that. Oh. I don't blame her. <laughs> I don't think anyone blames her. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's also an interesting, because again, you know, still very, very, very in denial. Yeah, yeah. Just call her Cleopatra. Yes, Clean exactly. denial. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I got. Nothing I've... else really... I, I like I said, fanfic almost, but not quite. Maybe I'll do it next week. Yeah. One of the fanfics I was watching from like three, four years ago. Just updated, popped up again. Just randomly updated with an in-between chapter. Yeah, yeah I was like, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but we'll see what happens. There's another one I'm actually interested in, but I have to kind of wait a couple more chapters at least before I say anything because I'm wondering where the waters it's... before we... Yeah, because it's to, to say I have very good reason to like it, but it's just I don't know the direction quite yet, so I'm waiting. It involves Twilight and or Sunset, doesn't it? Of yes, course it does. does. Of course it does. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all we've got for you. A little bit shorter episode than normal, but that's all right. So, yeah, if you liked what you heard and you want to hear more, you can find all of our episodes, past, future, present, at pony411.libsyn.com Remember, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N You can also find us on iTunes. Just search for Pony411. You can subscribe to us there and have it auto-download and all sort of fancy stuff there. You can also find us on Stitcher, stitcher stitcher.com. You can also use their mobile app on phones. Search for us. All that sort of fancy stuff. 
can also find us on YouTube if you don't want to find it, if you want if you don't want to download anything. That's youtube.com slash twenty four one one. Like, comment, and subscribe. Yes. All those things. You can also listen to us on Ponyville FM. We air there every Tuesday at six PM Pacific, nine PM Eastern. So tune in and listen. Do it. You can also find us on Ponyville Lime. On Ponyville Live. It'll update on their homepage whenever we update. So you can find us through there. If you would like to contact us, you can email us. We are pony411podcast at gmail.com. So send us emails. Let us know if you liked what we said, didn't like what we said, if you have suggestions or comments, criticisms, you name it. Send it to us. You can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash pony411. Go like us there. We post whenever we post a new episode. We're not. Hmm? You can also find us on Twitter. We're at Pony411. So follow us, tweet us, tell us what you liked, what you didn't like. Direct message us. Yeah, you can DM us too. Yeah, I open that up too, and you don't have to even have to follow us Neat. anymore. So yeah. Please don't abuse that. Please don't abuse that. Yeah. You can also find us individually on Twitter. I am at Alcatraz with a 7 instead of a T and an underscore at the end. And he is at Nemesis Prime 1. Age of Ultron was great. It was good. That's all we have for this week. Mm -hmm. We hope you tune in next week. Pinky and Dash. Pinky and Dash. We'll see how this goes. Maybe Griffin. Griffin. Maybe a certain Griffin. Maybe a certain. We don't know yet. We shall find out. So yes, until then, please, funny responsibly. See ya.